wouldn't it therefore though it, it makes sense that if Megan did in fact tell Scott and the others that evening and that she was the first to say that shouldn't she be, be considered a suspect oh yeah but don't think that when Joe Disley when we did the phone records yeah the phone records from my understanding way back because we gave over Joe Burford well, let me tell you this. The evidence that Megan was first to the doll coffin was shot, and I promise you what I'm going to tell you, it, you here is true. Jennifer Jenakova, her last name is spelled J-E-N-A-C-O-V-A, Jennifer Jenakova, she was Megan's best friend. She confirmed that Megan called her at 12.08 a.m., first night from the Coffin neighbor's house, the Limburgers, L-I-M-B-E-R-G-E-R -E -E house, from the Limburgers house, and Megan had, and she stated that Coffin was shot in the head, and Jennifer Jennifer Kova and her husband were so shocked that they wrote a note, a contemporaneous note that morning memorializing those words of Megan and the time that was on the microwave and the answering machine. And the first time Scott and Megan spoke that evening was in fact 10 minutes later after Megan had called her friend. When Megan called Scott at his house, it was at 12.18 a.m., exactly 10 minutes later. This is verified by the phone records. On this call, she told Scott that David is dead. He was shot. This is when Scott was told as he stated. How do we know this is true? Craig Foster, David's best friend and Craig's girlfriend, heard Megan say exactly what Scott claimed. They were standing next to Megan when she called Scott and told him this. They were confused themselves. I understand him. Yeah. They were confused. This uh, Craig Foster and his girlfriend, they had been confused themselves that evening at how could she possibly have known this. This is verified in an Atlanta police interview with Craig Foster and his girlfriend. Foster also testified to this in court and in fact stated that he told Detective Chambers that first evening that Megan had told Scott this. That was on the was testified in court. And Megan, then she changed her story and told both the Genicovas and the assistant district attorney Buford, Joe Buford, that she might have in fact told Scott Coffin was shot. This was just a few days after the murder. And then District Attorney Powell Howard verified this, uh, that this had happened when he testified in court. And uh, uh, it was about, and that was in 2006, and it was about a year after the murder, later, when Megan completely changes her story again and says that Scott had told her Coffin was shot. This was after the huge reward was offered from the Coffin family. And in addition to the fact her changing stories are very suspicious, no evidence whatsoever supports this version and it is fact impossible based on the timing of the calls as documented by phone records and the testimony of the Genicovas. The Genicovas had no motive to lie and in fact have every reason to support Megan since Jennifer Genicova and Megan were best friends. The Genicovas also had no way of knowing that first day how important the timing of Megan's call was. It seems clear to me that Megan was lying and somehow had guilty knowledge. This is what is supported by the evidence, but it seems no one on the prosecution team bothered to investigate it. I want to ask you a question because I think your honesty and I want to know uh, you're honest and I want, you, I want to know the truth. If Megan in fact knew and divulged first that Coffin had been shot in the head, 
And in fact, if she did tell Scott to this before anyone else knew this, wouldn't it be true that Megan is either guilty or at least a real suspect? Well, of course. Okay. And to be fair, this is what everyone claimed made Scott the killer. If Megan was in fact the one who told Scott and the others, as evidence clearly shows, don't you agree she could be guilty or somehow involved? Well, that's what Joe Burton was saying later on once he got off the case.